Hi everyone, this is Miss Janelle from the Ella Johnson Library, and we are here for another Art Explorers. Today we are going to learn a little bit about aluminum foil embossing. You may have seen this project before, and we're going to do it a little bit differently. So in the kit that you picked up from the library, you should have a piece of cardboard or foam core, some thicker aluminum foil, yarn, and some permanent markers. In addition, you will also need a pair of scissors, glue, and a spoon. Yes, a spoon. So. Embossing is a technique where we create a relief or depression with metal, usually something that's hammered and thin, like tin, uh, bronze, copper, but we're going to use something that's a little bit more accessible to us, which is aluminum foil. Now the aluminum foil that you have is gonna be a little bit thicker than most aluminum foil, and this is gonna help us when we use our spoon to burnish. So, you are going to create a design however you'd like, and there's two ways that you can do this. You can create a design with the yarn that we have provided for you in your kit, cutting it up, gluing it down to your cardboard or your styrofoam. The other thing you could do is use the actual glue itself to create a relief. So I did both because I wanted a different kind of texture for this. I did a sunrise, and so I used hot glue to create more of a low relief, and then I put the yarn on hot glue to create a high relief. So we're gonna see different heights of lines for this particular design. Once you have your design laid out and glued on and completely dried, then you're going to take your aluminum foil and we're going to press across. Find your edges first. and then tuck the corners. Embossing is used a lot in paper and metal work. Some of the first embossing ever done was actually done in illuminated manuscripts, which that means that there was some very bright pictures and then they did some embossing relief on the paper for the words to stand up off of the page. So that's what we're going to do. Now I have the corners tucked and I have it smoothed out a little bit. This is where the spoon comes in. Now we're going to burnish. Burnish is a term that's used a lot um, when you're working with metal, uh, to make jewelry. Also, when you are doing printmaking, you might burnish a metal plate. So anything that kind of involves a piece of metal. You're gonna take the round part of the spoon and you're going to use it to rub aluminum foil to get it to stick more. And you wanna be gentle. You don't wanna to push too hard. But what this is gonna do is it's going to help you, use your hands too, get in the cracks and push the foil up against the glue and the yarn that's underneath it. You can use your fingers first, squeeze it out, and then the spoon kind of get some of the wrinkles out. And you can see we're really pushing it and adhering it to our foam or our cardboard. Now if you have finer details like I have here, you're gonna probably wanna use your hand. You could also use something like a Q-tip, something with a soft edge, because you wanna get that detail in there, but you also don't wanna rip the foil. And you're gonna have to do this for a while to really get it to create the shapes underneath. You can see in here, because of the sort of jagged lines, you wanna push and get into all the nooks. 
All right, so that looks pretty good. Now you can tape the back of this so that the foil stays down. You could also use glue. I think that looks pretty good. So we can see the details of the waves and the lines and the sunset. Now is the fun part. You get to use your permanent markers to draw on top of the aluminum foil. What I usually drew, drew is to draw in the negative space. So that means the space where there aren't raised up lines. And I'll show you why it's nice to do that. like I said before, was I drew in the negative space and I left the areas that were raised without any color. What it does is kind of create this really interesting outline that works to your advantage in your design because it makes those lines pop out even more. You can color over top of them if you'd like, but I kind of like to leave the aluminum there. It makes it a little bit brighter. You can also go over it with like black or another darker color. So now I'm going to do a little bit of blending across with my markers. And I'm going to start with a lighter purple going into a darker purple. All right, so I have my two colors down and now I'm gonna take the lighter color. And I did two layers of the dark purple because I kind of want a little bit more of that color in there so I can blend it down into the dark, into the light. So you can see, kind of blending it like that. So you can blend permanent markers. Now what's gonna happen though, since we're going light marker into dark marker, create a little bit of an ombre like we see here. And you can keep working that. These markers have alcohol in them, like rubbing alcohol like you'd use for um, a scratch. So they kind of sit on the surface of the foil for a little bit and don't dry quite just yet. So that helps when you want to blend. Now what's gonna happen though is the light colored marker is gonna get a little bit darker on it. So what you can do is kind of rub it on a piece of paper or cardboard to get that excess color off. I'm gonna have to do it for a little bit. And you can see, it goes right back to is to use a Q-tip like we did before, or your finger. If you use a Q-tip, you can dip it in alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and kind of rub it. If you wanna use your finger, you just need to get a little bit extra of the color on there, and then you can do that. Now, what that's gonna do though is dye your finger. So, to get that off of your finger, you will need to use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to loosen it and then you can use soap and water and it should come off nice and easy. That's a trick, how to get permanent marker off your hands. Not so much on clothes, but good for your hands. So this technique kind of creates more of a tie-dye effect on your aluminum foil, but you do need to color a lot to get the extra color on there in order to do this technique. And like I said, you could also use a Q-tip dipped inside of rubbing alcohol as well. See how this one's, it's too dry to actually blend, so it's kind of coming up. When you have enough of the color on there, 
it blends really nicely. So that is how we do aluminum foil embossing. I hope you guys had so much fun with me today. Send us a picture of what you created and we'll post it on our Facebook. And I hope to see you guys very soon in the library. Stay tuned, we have summer reading coming up and there's gonna be tons of extra art activities that we're going to be doing and some really fun outside activities around town. So stay tuned for that and I will see you guys at the library. Have a good day.